Now before we begin, I promised my YouTube subscribers about notifying you if there are any S4 minis available. To show my appreciation, I have a very limited amount of S4 minis available in my secret shop. The password for one week only for YouTube is YouTube, all lowercase. Make sure that you add the S4 mini to your cart, and then check out my normal shop, add any extra accessories that you like to purchase, and then check out all at one time. Thank you so much guys for your awesome support, and I have more minis available and more mini news next week. So it's been a while since my last useful video, and I apologize for that. I have some excuses, both good and bad, but let's skip past all that and head straight to the content. How to stuff a 1080 Ti Mini in an S4 Mini. This past June, Zotac blew our minds again with the announcement of the 1080 Ti Mini. One of my awesome customers contacted me and asked me if I wanted to do a 1080 Ti build. Yeah, we worked out a plan so I could have this teeny tiny destroyer benchmarks in my lab on launch day. Now I record a ton of information, but the challenges and complexity of an ultra small form factor 1080 Ti S4 mini build, well, are mini. And I needed to be sure this build was more viable than novel before I made a video about it. Now there's still a lot more to test, but the emails keep stacking up, so it's time to get this video out of the way. The first thing you're gonna need is grit. This is not an easy build and you have to have a lot of patience. You're also gonna have to have some soldering skills and general system tuning ability and a lot of money, a whole lot of money. Yes, the 1080 Ti is already really expensive, but powering the 1080 Ti is brutally expensive. Before you begin though, ask yourself a question sincerely. Do I need a 1080 Ti? The 1080 is already a really powerful card, and if you don't have a monitor that's really gonna take advantage of it, this is gonna be really expensive. Now, I'm not here to tell you what to do or what not to do, just how to do it. Just proceed at your own risk to wallet. The S4 Mini is designed to use a two-part power solution, an AC-DC power supply, that's the power brick, and also an internal DC power supply, which is often called the distributor. This is the real secret sauce to why the S4 Mini is so small, and the HD Plex 400 is the perfect solution for this build. It's easily capable of powering a 1080 Ti system, and it barely gets warm when other components start to get molten. Unfortunately, the tried and true Dell 330 watt power brick is just not gonna cut it here. Now, the only option I knew would probably work is the Eurocom 780. This massive brick is really like a server power supply that's been converted to work with Eurocom's amazingly huge and powerful SLI laptops. Now, they don't actually like selling this power brick for some reason. Heck, they don't even like answering emails. If you do convince them to sell it to you, expect to pay a premium. My customers and I have paid between $470 to $570 to get this power brick. So of course I'm not impressed with the Eurocom's price, so I started looking for a DIY solution. After a lot of research, because of course this question is asked quite a bit on smallformfactor.net, I did manage to find a power supply that looked like it was gonna fit the bill. It's a Delta power supply that was developed for the medical industry. It's 400 watt output, 19 volt solution that looked like it was gonna be just perfect with a little TLC. Initially I found this on Mauser Electronics, but it actually is available on Amazon now for under 130 bucks. Now both power supplies are gonna require some modding and soldering. I chose to use aviation connectors, which are my go-to for power mods, and I purchased some extras to put on my website for customer convenience. Be warned, it is not easy to mod the Eurocom's extremely beefy cable, but it is possible. I chose to strip back a good three inches and carefully soldered the connectors on. I used gaffer's tape to make up the thickness of the stripped insulation and heat shrink to cover over it. The result is a connector that's strong and looks at least okay. Obviously, the Delta power supply requires a lot more work. You need to chop off the end of a normal PC power cord, strip it, and crimp on eyes so you can attach it to the labeled input terminals. Check out my video on butt connectors to learn more about this process. For the output, I use another PC power cord and soldered an aviation connector on the end, splitting the ground to spread it out. I used MDPC SATA sleeving from Mod 1 to sleeve the cords, and you know what? I think the result is actually pretty nice. I quickly whipped up something for the cover out of perforated aluminum plate. I plasti dipped the underside, painted the top, and used rubber U-channel along the sides to cover up the sharp edges. I think it looks okay, but given more time, I wanna make a proper shroud for it. It's important to note this is not necessary if you plan to keep your fingers and pets away from the internals of this power supply, and it'll even cool a little bit better. But I did want to experiment with making it, you know, somewhat shockproof. 
I need to get ahead of myself here while I'm still in the subject of these power supplies so you can choose the right one for you. The Eurocom is the safer choice as it requires much less modding. It has more safety features, tons more power, and has active cooling built in. The downsides are that it's brutally expensive, it's hard to buy, and very loud. Although you could mod it with some quieter fans, seeing how you're hacking up pretty much everything else. Choose this power brick if you don't want to do any tuning for power for the CPU or GPU and want a stable system out of the box. This supply works great under all conditions and really long gaming sessions. I'm hesitant to recommend the Delta 400 because I don't want to get sued. It can get brutally hot and possibly could cause a fire. I'm not actually sure it has a temperature monitor, although you could look that up in its spec sheet. I was able to power a 7700K and the 1080 Ti off of it for a really long time, almost a month, and I had very few resets, but the resets were there and they could be pushed instantaneously by loading up Furmark and Prime95. This means the power supply is just strong enough to power this combo, and you're probably going to need to put some active power controls on your CPU and your GPU. This is where the tuning is going to come in handy. You might be able to get around this by going with a lower wattage CPU, and although the 1080 Ti is an absolute beast, I do find there are lots of 35 watt CPUs which aren't gonna bottleneck this card. If you were going to choose a Delta 400, I do recommend that you wire up some active cooling. It does have some fan header spots inside the power supply. For all its faults, the Delta 400 is an economical, fully functional choice. But seriously guys, be responsible. Do not endanger yourself or others by fiddling with electronics that you don't understand. That's my job. And if it helps you make a decision, for my customers, I am not gonna be using this brick. I'm gonna be recommending the Eurocom 780. But for myself and my mods, I'm gonna be using the Delta 400. Okay, so now that your power supply is all wired up and your HD Plex 400's DC jack has been wired to match, and of course you've thoroughly tested your new system, it's time to put it all together. The only way that you're gonna be able to accomplish this is by disassembling the entire S4 Mini. First take off the outer panels, then the bezel, and then separate the inner chassis into two pieces. Take your PCIe power cable and plug it into your 1080 Ti, install the 1080 Ti into the back half of the back chassis, and then you can sandwich the two panels of the chassis together. This is necessary because the 1080 Ti has two 8-pin connectors, and there's just no possible way that you can install it in the S4 Mini without fully disassembling it. The final thing that you're going to know is that you're going to need an aftermarket bezel to install this card because it is oversized. Oh, okay, so this is a little strange. Most of us assumed that the 1080 Ti Mini was going to be the same length as the Zotac 1080 Mini, and this was a good assumption. Pictures put it out as looking the same, and many reviews said it was the same length. But actually getting it into my office and sticking it into an S4 Mini, I found that the early models were actually a little bit longer, like almost a millimeter longer. Oh. Now, this of course is negligible in most builds, but if you're sticking an S4 Mini, every millimeter counts. And this meant that the 3D bezels I sell on my website actually weren't going to be compatible with it. Some other early adopters on the smallformfactor.net forums also noticed this. So I went to work creating another bezel set specific for the 1080 Ti Mini. You can find this on my website labeled the 2D open bezel and the full vent plate in carbon fiber. But then something strange happened. I started doing more of these builds and the cards seemed to get smaller and be the exact same size as the Zotac 1080. I don't know if it actually shrunk, but if for some reason it works with a lot of the 3D bezels, in fact, all the 3D bezels I have in my office, and lots of my customers on the smallformfactor.net forums that have the new 1080 Ti minis are actually using my 3D bezels with it. So I don't know what to take away from this. I would say that the 3D bezels are not officially compatible with it, but they might fit. But you probably want to go with my new kit that's designed specifically for it. The last stage of your journey is going to be tuning. If you sprung for the Eurocom 780, you're not going to have to mess with any power limiters or undervolting, but you're still going to have to worry about heat and fan noise. Although the S4 Mini can vent better than any chassis well above its size class, the 1080 Ti is a very hot card and would benefit from extra fan flow. I spent almost 80 hours on pure thermal testing. 
in an 80 degree Fahrenheit room with no extra airflow over the S4 Mini, but it was elevated, the GPU's fan control did a really good job, keeping the clock rate around 1800 MHz and the target throttle temp at 84 degrees Celsius. I used a plethora of synthetics, but a lot of PUBG for the real world tests, as that's the most popular game right now amongst my customers. And maybe me. Maybe I, maybe I played a little bit of it. I got a chicken dinner! I got a chicken dinner! I got a chicken... I was really impressed that the GPU was able to keep such a high clock rate despite the really, really molten heat. But be warned, the system does get loud. Luckily, the fans on the 1080 Ti Mini sound really good. They have a really good tone to them. They're not whiny or high pitched, and if you're wearing headphones and gaming, you're not gonna notice them. But they do make a lot of noise as air whooshes through them. The Eurocom 780's fans are another story, and they are almost intolerable. You're definitely gonna wanna look into doing some modding to replace those fans. Something that's really important to know is that the 1080 Ti systems I have built all exhibit coil whine and a good amount of it. There really has to be some trade-offs for sticking this much hardware into such a small spot, and if coil wine really bothers you, then perhaps this is not a build for you. So what do you get for your time, money, heat, and noise? It is so powerful, I could actually not believe it. It scored so high, I thought my benchmarking methodology was broken. The 1080 Ti is such a jump over the 1080, I actually had to get every single 10 series card from Zotac in my office at one time to test them so I could update all of my benchmark boards. From the 1070 to the 1080, my score jumps about 400 points, which is pretty significant. But from the 1080 to the 1080 Ti, it jumps over 1100 points. That is some serious power in such a small machine, if you can afford the trade-offs. My first 1080 Ti S4 Mini was actually a dual boot Hackintosh. I bring this up because Nikita Gaidik has developed the easiest and most foolproof Mac OS S Sierra install for this particular hardware config, and I wanted to give him a shout out. Seriously, it was awesome. Check out the description for the files used to make your own. This video is kind of long, but I hope at least it was interesting. Special thanks to Muhammad for commissioning the first S4 Mini 1080 Ti Mini build, and for being patient while I worked all the bugs. He's also commissioning an X299i9 system in a bit, and that should make for a pretty interesting video. Next week, I will have more mini news and a big announcement for you, along with when pre-orders are going to start up again. In the meantime, if you want an S4 Mini, check out the links in the description. I appreciate you watching this, guys. It's good to be back, and I'll see you soon. Peace.